Hi, Tom from Flight Systems here. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to use a multimeter. We'll be looking at both the Fluke Auto Ranging Meter and an off-brand Manual Ranging Meter. We'll look at what each position on the selector does and how you can utilize it to check a generator. So let's get started. We'll start off with the Auto Ranging Meter first. Uh, it is definitely the easiest. You can set your selector and go, basically. Um, to start off, we have our AC volts, which is the V with the sine wave above it there. And we have volts DC, which is your DC indicator there, which is the, uh, the line with the dotted line under it. Millivolts DC, if you're measuring really small voltages, you shouldn't normally need this when you are doing generator measurement. Your ohms, which is the omega symbol, or as a lot of people refer to it as the upside down horseshoe. Uh, your ohms will be probably the most important um, unit that you'll be checking whenever you measure your generator. That will be all of your windings, your rotor, your stator, all of that stuff. You're going to want to check your resistances on those. Uh, continuity, which is basically your sound wave, your speaker icon, if you will, uh, that measures whether or not your circuit is complete. Uh, most meters say that anything under 40 ohms is considered uh, continuity, and you will hear a beep whenever there is a complete circuit, basically anything under 40 ohms. The next set is your amps and your milliamps. Start off with milliamps there. Uh, it's set for milliamps AC right now. Uh, you may have noticed on the screen there it said uh, leads. Uh, on most meters, pretty much all meters, uh, you have to reposition your red lead to the amps jack in order to measure amps. Um, same with milliamps. You have to stick it in the milliamps jack there. Uh, your normal position for volts, ohms, continuity, diode, capacitor, all that stuff is going to be over here right near common. And of course the last selector was amps there, AC amps there. Now on this meter there's a yellow button here that's basically your shift key. Uh, it will shift you to different modes. Uh, let's flip it back to AC volts there. Whenever we're on AC volts and we hit our yellow button, it switches to Hertz, HZ. Uh, that allows you to take your frequency measurements on AC circuits, DC circuits as well. Uh, that another important measurement to take on generators is your frequency. Uh, if we go up here to ohms, you'll see that's where our next yellow indicator is. We push that. That gives us capacitance check. Uh, there isn't too much use for capacitance on generators. Um, I would think probably one of the only places you might run into it would be checking the condenser on a points and condenser ignition system. That's about it. Uh, your next position here, that's a diode symbol. Uh, when you go to continuity and hit your shift button, that puts you in diode check. Uh, diode check, you probably won't run into too much, but it is a product of volts. So what you're actually measuring is your voltage or your voltage drop through the diode. And as you can see here, hertz over here, DC as well. You can shift your mode from AC to DC on your amp scale also. All right, so let's actually see how to use this thing. For measuring your resistance, very easy on this meter. Flip it to your ohm scale there. We'll set that there. All right, now since it's auto ranging, you do not have to select what range you're going to be working in. You can just connect up to the resistance you're trying to check and it will automatically range. So let's start with this resistor here. Check that. That is a 24 ohm resistor. It's coming up as 23.9 which 
most likely with intolerance. So we can immediately go grab another resistor here without having to change anything. Measure that, 470 ohms. And once again, Thirty-three K. We didn't have to change anything on the selector. It automatically does it for us. Let's move on to DC volts. Let me get my other leads here. All right. We will set our meter to DC volts, which is the V with the DC indicator above it. The solid line with the dotted line underneath it and we'll take a nine volt battery here there's our dc voltage coming from that nine volt battery right there 9.6 volts take a look at our coin cell here it's a three volt coin cell we'll go to our positive side and our negative on the other side and there's 3.2 volts on that battery. All right. Next, let's move on to AC. We'll reset our meter here, all right, selector to AC volts. And we'll take our power strip here. And with one hand, we want to employ the one hand rule so that we don't uh, electrocute ourselves. There we go. We're getting 122 volts there. And at this point, we can also check the frequency, which is very handy to be able to do on a generator as well. Now, on our line frequency here, you'll see it's a pretty solid 60 hertz right there. On your generator, that is going to be moving around because the frequency is dependent on the engine speed itself. So that is your frequency right here. We're measuring 60 hertz. We can hit our yellow button again, flip back to volts AC, and we can see our volts there. All right, next let's take a look at the manual ranging meter. First thing you'll notice is that the manual ranging meter has many more positions on the selector. This is because we have to set our range manually instead of letting the meter do it automatically like the other one. Each one of these positions shows the maximum value you plan to measure in each one of these categories. So as an example here, in ohms, if we go to 200, what that is saying is in this position, all of our readings need to be under 200 ohms. If we plan to measure something that's greater than that, we have to flip up to the next scale. So just to test that out, we'll take a look here with our 24 ohm resistor first. And we can see right around 24 ohms. Obviously this meter isn't as accurate as the other one, but 24 ohms. Now let's go to our next resistor here Hook it up. This is 470 ohms. 470 is larger than 200. So what you get is nothing. The meter is telling you that you need to go to the next range up. Now, many meters do this differently. This one just shows an open circuit, which is one. Uh, a lot of meters will show you OL, OL, which shows either overload or over limit. Each manufacturer has a different way of stating it, but that's what it means when it says OL on the screen. It means you are not in the correct range for what you're trying to measure. So 470, bigger than 200. Let's go to our 2K. That's the next range up. And you'll see, there we go. There is our measurement, 470. All right, now let's take our next one here, which was 33K. You expect this to 
have a 1 there as well. It's out of range for the 2K scale. It's also going to be out of range for the 20K scale. So we have to go up to the 200K scale. And you'll see there's our reading. 33K. All right. So that's how a manual ranging meter works. Let's check it out with DC as well. Let me grab my other leads here. All right, so let's start off with the three volt battery, the three volt coin cell here. Obviously we want to flip to DC volts. Let's go to our 200 millivolt scale, which you can imagine is gonna give us a one there. It's out of range. So let's go to our next scale, which is 2. Well, we're still going to be out of range. There's our 1. So the next one that would work is our 20-volt scale. And there's our 3 volts right there on the screen. Since our 9-volt battery here is still within that 20-volt range, we can check that on the same scale. There's our 9 volt battery right there. Now, for our AC, same principle applies. With my meter here, you switch between DC and AC with this button here. I currently have it at DC. Switch it to AC your selector range stays the same. It's not clearly indicated that that's the case, but since there's a DC and AC button on here, you stay in your volt section, and that allows you to see what you're doing. All right, so we're on the 20 volt scale right now. You see I put my meters in there, my meter leads in there, comes up one, it's out of range, which we expected. So we can pop it up to 200 there, there we go. There's our 120 volts right there. And that's that. Now this meter does not have frequency, so we can't check frequency on this meter. Um, but what we can see as an example here is your continuity. Continuity, like I said, is simply path, uh, a closed path. Um, Basically, like I said, all meters consider it either under 40 ohms or t under 24 or so ohms. Uh, they will consider that continuity. And we'll see here, there's our beep when the circuit is closed. There's that. Now we can also test that theory there with the resistor. There's a 24 ohm resistor. It beeps. The 470, we would expect to not beep. Well, that's the information you need on how to use a multimeter. We covered resistance, DC volts, AC volts, and AC frequency, all four of which you'll utilize while troubleshooting a generator. Also keep in mind that multimeters have a lot of handy uses around the house, like checking circuit breakers, light switches, outlets, but also in your car, like checking your battery, your alternator, and checking to see if fuses are any good. Don't forget, Flight Systems has a lot of good products for your generator, like control boards and regulators, and our handy slick stick. Make sure you check it out at flightsystems.com or call 1-800-403-3728. I'm Tom from Flight Systems. Thanks for watching. It's easy to book RV tech support at FlightSystems.com. Just hit the Book Now button, choose your date and time for the appointment, hit Next, and enter a few simple details such as your name, your phone number, and your email address. It also helps to include a brief description of the problem and your generator's model number.
agree to the cancellation policy, and hit the Confirm button. Just review the info and hit Finish. You're now one step closer to a working generator.